This is the Holland Assets Podcast, where we show you how to start and run your own trucking company. Ever wanted to go out on your own? Follow Chris as he goes through the highs and lows of running on his own authority. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Holland Assets Podcast. This is episode number 55. Today, we're talking about the Ten Commandments for Owner Operators. I am Craig, and over there... Chris, that, that was a pretty good Ten Commandments voice. Well, I'm, it's uh, if only I had the resonance of, say, a Charlton <laughs> Heston, you know. Uh, one, one could wish, I suppose. Anyway, we're going to get there in just a moment. Just a reminder to everybody, before we get started, please go to hollandassetsllc.com and check out the full show notes for this and other episodes. And uh, you can find all sorts of links and charts and graphs and comment sections and everything there. We would love to see you there. Also, find us on Facebook if you want a, uh, a more social media-centric way to get a hold of us. We would love to see you on the Holland Assets Facebook page as well. Okay, Chris, today we're going to be talking about the Ten Commandments. Your, your Ten Commandments. You have come down from on high <laughs> and given the uh, the stone tablets or the chrome tablets, uh, the chrome tablets. <laughs> to, uh, to the, the trucking industry, right? So how do you want to, how do you want to start this subject here, Chris? I like the Chrome tablets. Maybe we should have these, uh, can we get these emblazoned in, in Chrome? I like that idea. Yeah. 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 So it's something that they can attach to the, uh, the back of their cab or something. Yeah. So you can have Chrome mud flaps with, with, with Chris's 10 commandments for owner operators. I want my cut. (laughs) I want my cut, Chris. Uh, That's a great idea. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So, so today we're going to talk about my 10 commandments, not to be confused with the Ten Commandments from the Bible, but obviously I'm making a little bit of play on the Ten Commandments of the Bible. And you know, if you think about the Bible, um, in the Bible, God gives His people Ten Commandments that He expects them to live by, and then if they live by them, you know, according to the Bible, they're going to be promised blessings. And and similarly, my Ten Commandments for owner operators. If owner operators live by these Ten Commandments, they should also receive rewards in the form of being more successful if they adhere to these (laughs) uh, these 10 commandments so in this uh extremely fraught analogy you are god and (laughs) are you are you where's the lightning where is the lightning so uh, uh, what i'm getting at here is uh, are you are you going to expect perfect obedience out of these uh 10 commandments is that what you're telling me no because i I, i'm nowhere near perfect so (laughs) people don't necessarily have to be 100 percent perfect to these 10 commandments but you know just just like you know the bible says the more strictly you adhere to my 10 commandments for owner operators the lower risk you're going to have and your chances for being successful are going to be greater and the amount of financial success you receive will will increase the the more strictly you adhere to them yeah yeah all right well i detect a kind of greatest hits a, a chris's greatest hits coming with all sorts of stuff that you have probably talked about in depth in previous episodes, right? Uh, some of these things. And so uh, I'm going to preemptively encourage people, if they haven't done so yet, to make sure that they go check out the backlog uh, as we go through some of these Ten Commandments. Uh, I, if I recall correctly from reading, uh, glancing through them, one of them at least is saving money. And yeah, I know that's that's, that's a criticism be, for sure. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I yeah. bet you could have guessed that without a look and looking <laughs> at anything. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, let's, let's move on with it then. Chris, let's get to your 10 commandments. All right. Kind of, kind of before we get into them, I, we're going to, we're going to not necessarily get religious here, but talk a little bit about the story in the Bible. We're going to get theological. We're going to get theological. That's that's a good way to put it. So in Mark 12 in the Bible, um, you've got a situation where, um, the scribes and and do you remember from your, your fun days in Sunday school who the scribes were in the Bible? Yeah. They're the, they're still the favorite people in the world today. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely they're the lawyers they're right? the lawyers yeah so they're the lawyers and they're trying to kind of catch jesus in a, in a trap because you know they know these 10 commandments they live by the 10 commandments and and one of the scribes comes to jesus and says what is the greatest commandment you remember what yeah what, yeah uh, lo- what he love says? the lord thy god with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind or something yeah, like very that. very good that's that, that's that's basically it almost verbatim it's like you have them mem- memorized yeah so can we go if you go to through the Ten Commandments, and you know that's what Jesus said, the, the first four of those Ten Commandments encompass that, 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 concept. that concept of of love the Lord thy God. 
And then what was the second thing that, that Jesus said at that point? Love your neighbor like yourself. Love your neighbor like yourself, exactly. And then the, the last six commandments of the Ten Commandments kind of en- encompass that idea, that theme of, of, of loving your, na- your, your neighbor. Okay. You know, don't commit adultery, uh, don't covet, you know, all those. I'm really waiting murder, for this. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see this swing toward trucking. <laughs> <laughs> We're eventually going to get there. <laughs> so w- what I want you to kind of keep in mind is, is if you think about it, the first four of the 10 commandments in the Bible focus on loving God. This, the last six focus on loving the neighbor. And we're going to kind of take a similar theme with that. Um, as we go through these 10 commandments that I have for owner operators. So love your truck and love your dispatcher as yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not even close. Oh, okay. But think, keep that in the back of your mind. And then I'll kind of, when I tie this all back together at the very end, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, that separation of the first four versus the last six. See if you can pick up what the theme is in the first four versus the last six of these 10 commandments. Okay. All right. Okay. So the first one is kind of like you said, build a cash reserve. Save, save your money, folks. Save your money. Uh, Imagine that. That's number one right off the bat. Uh, yeah. And this is something that you've been working on for the last year as it, you've uh, started hauling assets, the, the trucking company, not the podcast. I don't, I don't have a giant slush fund here in the studio, unfortunately. <laughs> we but. don't have, we don't have pallets of cash sitting, <laughs> sitting next to us. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah. What do you want to say about saving money, building that slush fund? So the, the the slush fund, you know, sometimes slush funds are considered, you know, what you use to bribe politicians and things like that. It's not really that kind of slush fund. I've I've basically got two two parts that you need to save for. One is to save for unexpected expenses, and and I think for most owner operators um, that just have one truck, you're talking about a, at least saving, getting a, a that that saving set aside of ten thousand dollars, and you may need to increase that a little bit more if you have an older truck. Um, but you know, $10,000 is, is a, a really good start and that'll cover most things. And, and if it doesn't cover most things, you know, if, if you can put $10,000 towards even an engine rebuild, it'll go a long way. You can probably typically get some financing to cover the rest if you, if you absolutely have to. Okay. All right. that, that's one savings for unexpected expenses, $10,000 and that you don't touch unless you, you know, that's kind of your emergency fund. And so, and then anything over ten thousand dollars, you just use for peanut M and M's. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. lots road. of it, lots and lots of peanut okay. M and M's. All right. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else on that one? So then, the the second piece that you need to, as far as kind of building that that slush fund, um, is um, building some op- some additional operating expenses. So that that's really what is going to ensure that you're going to be able to pay your bill. So over time, you want to build a savings of about a month's worth of operating expenses. So if things happen and you're not able to keep running, you can kind of, you know, keep paying your bills and you don't have to finance as much stuff. Uh, so, so you really want to have that $10,000 for emergency and then about a month's worth of, um, operating expenses set aside. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So the, uh, the operating expenses are separate then a month's worth of operating expenses. In addition to the 10,000 you've set aside for, uh, emergency repairs or whatever. Yep. Okay. So for most people, you're probably looking at Total, total, you wanting to have twenty, twenty five, maybe thirty thousand dollars between aside. those two set aside. Okay, and and that's going to take some time to build. You know, it is. so if it's not going to happen overnight, and it, it may not happen in the first year, it may take a little bit of time. But yeah. it, you know, as long as you are, are methodical, you have that as your goal, um, you can you can certainly get there. Okay, very good. So, commandment number two. So, commandment number two, and and really, this is this is focused a lot on a, a brand new guy trying to start out. So this is one of those things that I feel is is really really critical for success. It, it it's just it's absolutely essential, and that is to pay yourself no more than what you have been earning as a driver. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, and this is one that I had some questions about, and you may address uh, you, you might address this question as you go on with this one. But as, as I see it, yeah, there's the one temptation which is to pay yourself more you know, maybe significantly more than you were making as an employee driver. But then the other one is, are are there people who are out there not actually paying themselves a wage and just taking all of the the uh, profit and saying that that is their wage? Yeah. And so they're not putting it back into the company or saving or whatever. Let, yeah, I, there, I'd like there, to dive into this one. That's a great question. And there are people that definitely do that. And if you go back into the accounting episode, which I think is episode like number two or three, mm-hmm. you know, pretty early on, we talk a lot about how paying yourself a wage in the long run will help you save on taxes. Um, but especially if you have an S corp as your organization of your business, 
but um, that that's that's a lot of it. And then the problem is with doing something like that too, even more so above taxes, is you don't have a defined set the uh, amount of money that you pay yourself. And so it gets really easy at that point to one month you have a really good month taking all the money out. Another month that you know, you have a, a, a decent month, you know, still potentially taking out more money out of the business than, than should be. And, and that's what one of those things that can really la- lead to um, financial issues. Right. Yeah. So this one definitely feeds into uh, commandment number one, right? Saving money where if you are paying yourself too much or if you're not really paying attention to the wage and just using all the profits for yourself, then you're not building up that that emergency fund, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what ends up happening here is what I recommend is if you, before you make that transition to becoming an owner operator, if you are getting paid by the company you were working for, let's say 50 cents a mile, then you should pay yourself as a driver, no more than 50 cents a mile. And that's the money you take out of the business. And that's the money you take home to pay, you know, either your rent or your mortgage car payments, right? Um, you know, it's most the, people, the money you live on, it's the money you live on. Yep. So then everything else above and beyond that for at least the first year while you're building that savings, um, needs to stay in the company. So what does that look like then uh, for somebody who's just starting out? You, you've mentioned, uh, that it should be exactly that wage. Do you have I, I'm trying to think of an illustration here for how this would look. I, I've, I've recently kind of been mentoring a guy that's trying to start a business outside of the trucking industry. And, you know, he, he kind of goes, you know, one of the things that he started talking about, well, if I bring in $2,000 a week and I spend $1,000 on product and, and labor, that leaves me $1,000 a week that I can just, you know, take home, take out of the bank account and, and go spend. And, and that's just, you know, that's, that's not the way it works because that's going to kill yourself. That's a sure way to kill the business because you're not one saving any money. And, you know, at some point down the road, you're going to have an unexpected expense. You know. Yeah. You never know when the linebacker deer is going to come out of nowhere and yeah. take on your truck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so my point is with this guy that I've kind of been helping mentor a little bit, you know, starting his business is you you just you really don't know when you're first starting out what your operating expenses are going to be you you don't know what unexpected unexpected expenses are going to come up and it really takes some time to figure that out and that's why I preach that you've got to really save that extra money for the first year whether it's trucking or something else you need to set a defined wage you pay yourself that and then you save the rest and as you're trying to figure out how much money is it going to cost every month? Cause you know, your first month, your operating expenses are going to be something. Your second month, they're going to be different. The third month, they're going to be different. But over time, you kind of get a general idea on average what those operating expenses are going to be. You know, you kind of, you kind of can see then as time goes on, you know, what it's going to be so that once you've got that, that savings set up, then you know how much you can on average kind of take out every month and it normalizes things. It creates that cushions for the, for the rainy day when things happen and, and you've got to spend a little bit of extra money, you're going to have it. And then, you know, maybe you dip into that emergency fund a little bit and, and then for a little while you have to take it out. So the other thing that I think is really, really critical in this kind of a situation is once you start taking money out of your business for personal spending, you never commit that money to something that is part of a regular expense. So you don't go out and say, okay, well, the last two months I've been able to take out an extra 500 bucks. I'm going to go buy a truck that, that ties me to a $500 um, payment every, payment month. every yeah. month because that you can't necessarily rely on that extra money every month. So usually what I do is I usually take that extra money. If I'm taking it out of the company personally, I either set it aside and save something, save it so I can buy something big or I use it on like a vacation or something else that, you know, if, if, if things happen later on down the road, you know, I can skip a vacation. I can, you know, I, I, I'm not tied to having to pull that money out of my business every single month because yeah. that's, that's, that's what's going to get you in trouble. I've seen that happen way, way too many times. Which is a, a long way of saying, pay yourself a fair wage. And don't be an idiot with your money. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So so let's move on to commandment number three then, Chris. So commandment number three is maximize your revenue. Um, And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And and one of the things that's really important about maximizing your revenue, I feel like a lot of the times that can kind of help cover up some of the mistakes that you make. 
if you're making a little bit more money every month, then, you know, if you, if you do something stupid or make a mistake, that extra revenue is going to help compensate for that. You know, the, the, the bigger you can make your margins and, and your margins are the difference between, um, the, the money coming in and your expenses going out. If you can have a, the bigger, the margin, the better, because that, that means you're bringing more profit into the business and it, it just, you know, the more money you can bring in, the more, the better margins you have, the, the safer your business is going to be. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, okay. So give me some ways that we can maximize our uh, revenue here. Well, one of the things I've been preaching all along and, and it gets easier as time goes on. It's, it's harder when, when your company's first starting is working directly with shippers as much as possible. You know, find those direct loads, establish some relationships with shippers. They're typically the best paying loads and because you're cutting out the middleman. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, another thing that's really good to do is is just is to follow the good paying freight. Um, you know, a lot of freight within the United States is seasonal, and rates are seasonal. You take, for example, um, there's a there's a nursery that's really close by to me that has really good loads at different times of the year, and 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 mostly kind of through March through June is is really really good. They're always looking for owner operators. They're hungry. They pay well. The reefer doesn't have to run very hard. They're not too heavy. Um, but they still go through a broker because this broker handles a nationwide account. So they, they like to use the broker, but even through the broker, they pay really well. So, you know, kind of establishing that relationship with, with that specific broker. So they learn you, they know you, and they learn to trust you. Then they're going to start handing you those good paying loads. Um, yeah. And the thing that you have to do with that is you have to be really careful when you approach brokers about things like that. One of the things brokers are always afraid of is trucking companies coming in and taking their business from them. So when you decide you want to work with a broker like this, trust me, you're never going to take, if you're a small trucking company, you're never going to take um, freight away from a shipper or freight away from, from a, a broker, broker that has a big shipper because that big shipper needs somebody that can handle a big volume of loads. Mm-hmm. So don't even try it and just go to the broker and say, hey, I know... You know, this is one of the things that you guys worry about. I promise you, I'm not going to poach these loads. I just want to be able to do them for you regularly. And if they've, if you've done good work for them in the past and you can make them feel comfortable that you're not going to try to poach loads from them, you know, they'll start to give those to you. And they're typically the, you know, the better paying ones. They've got more margin in those loads and they'll pass some of that on to you because they trust you. You know, they're going to, they know you're going to handle things well. And, and so you just, you kind of need to be careful with it, but you, that's a really good way to find you know, the better than average paying freight. Yeah. Okay. Which uh, kind of goes into uh, the idea of knowing your rate per mile, what what your target rate per mile is, and then trying to get as close to that as you can on every load. Yep. Right. Okay. So let's go on to number four then. So number four is managing your costs. And um, there obviously as a trucking company, you've got a lot of costs, you know, a lot of money going out, but there's things that you... Um, can do, or or there's things that you can focus on. They're going to have the biggest impact. And so that's really what I want to talk about is a few of the things that are going to give you the biggest impact. So the first one, you know, outside of paying your driver, what's the biggest, what's the biggest way? Do you remember Craig? The biggest expense, the biggest expense. Uh, it's gotta be your truck payment. Nope. No. Oh, dang it. Uh, you got, what what do you, what do you put in the truck every day? (laughs) Your fuel, your fuel. You know what you don't put in your truck every day? There you go. Uh, You got it. I'm not even going to say say the word. You can't. There you go. You're going to have to bleep that out again. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're you putting diesel in your truck every single day. It's your biggest expense. Uh, and there's some things that you can do. You know, this is one of the areas where um, bigger fleets have an advantage over smaller fleets. But there are fuel cards out there. And and, and um, my business, I Thrive Funding, can help get you in contact with with some good fuel cards that, that we use or that we recommend and those fuel cards kind of do something similar to what the big fleets do. They pull their gallons together and they go out and negotiate better rates on fuel prices. And and some of them you can actually, if, if you're willing to do a little bit of legwork and a little bit of homework to um, find the best, the best fuel along the routes that you're traveling, you can actually get some pretty good rates. You know, if you're fueling at a, at, at the major change, like, like a loves or TA or pilot flying J you know, you're, you're paying way more for your fuel mm. than you could be. Interesting. Okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I typically was able to, when I was, when I was working the fuel really hard, I could typically save at least 20 to 30 cents more 
than what even the the fuel card rates of a flying j pilot loves so what you're saying is flying j is like the macy's and you want to be going to walmart <laughs> just go to walmart, go to walmart. it's walmart. fine yeah it's the, the fuel still you know decent it may it may not be quite as good but you, the the amount of money that you save is is well worth it okay uh interesting any other cost saving tips yeah, one more one more with fuel is just understanding if the the fuel tax oh, sure. a- agreement. Um, if you understand how the international fuel tax you, agreement. Wow, I'm impressed yeah. that you could remember that. Yeah, That's exactly what it is. Um, if you understand the that the taxes, because the tax rate from one state to another is completely different. And we we talk about this in 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 the fuel tax episode and and fuel episode. Um, you take for example, Illinois has a really high fuel rate. And the Missouri right next door has the lowest in the state. Illinois, one of the highest. Missouri, the lowest. Well, it, it even though it looks like you're paying a lot more for fuel in Illinois, a lot of the times because of the, the difference in fuel tax, you're actually better off buying your fuel in Illinois than you would be in Missouri. I wish I had you know right on the tip of my tongue what the uh, episode was, but I remember you talking about this and it kind of blew my mind a little bit you know making yeah. sure that you fill up on one side of the state line or another and uh and there's a lot of strategery that goes into that and i was really impressed yeah you basically just have to strip the the fuel tax and and look at the raw price of the fuel and a lot of the times you know even even though you're paying way more retail in illinois you're probably saving yourself a good 10 cents a gallon because you're fueling in Illinois versus Missouri. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. I'm going to look for that episode number, see if I can find it while you talk about any other cost-saving okay. techniques you've got. I've got two more that I, I, I just want to talk about really quick off the top of my head. So one of them doesn't really even have to do with your trucking company. It's you personally avoid eating out. And we have the eating out episode as well. And you you save yourself easy a hundred bucks a week mm-hmm. by preparing your own food and not eating out too often which uh, yeah you were you were doing what was it like pickle sandwiches or something nasty i can't remember <laughs> tuna sandwiches oh, that's with, right. okay, with, those with, are pretty good with sweet relish instead of dill oh, relish, that, that was the problem the, the, yeah that's what the problem is that's where my <laughs> wife uh she the sweet relish is definitely way the way to go <laughs> um then an, another one that you see this all the time is is a uh, especially a lot of times owner operators will just trick out their truck. And so we were talking about the Chrome 10 commandments. Yes. You know, I, uh, yeah. Tongue in cheek. Um, don't do it because all that money that you spend out on, on chroming out, uh, out your truck, making it look really cool. I mean, that's just a, a big expense that, you know, doesn't really help you get a load hauled from point A to point B. I mean, it looks cool, but in, in the long run, it's not, uh, it's not making you any more money. In fact, it's, it's hurting your bottom line. So it's, it's a workhorse. It's not a show pony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't, uh, you know, be, be very frugal about additional things that you put on your truck. Now, with that being said, you know, if that's your thing and that's what you like to do and that's how you like to spend your money, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, if, if you've got your savings built up and you've done everything that I've talked about and you're in a good financial position and that's how you want to spend your money, go ahead and do it. But uh, don't do it until you've got that savings yeah. account built up. So, Chris, it was episode number 13, conveniently titled How to Save Money on Fuel and More. Well, there so you go. So, I hope people go yeah. check it out. All right, let's go on to number five. We should start whipping through these because, uh, you know, we're, we're getting long. This is a long-winded, long-winded episode. Okay. So, number five is just is know your numbers. Um, and and this is is so critical. I mean, this is one of the things that I see that's a big difference between the guys that are super successful and the guys that don't are the ones that, that know them. And, and another episode that where we talk about um, calculating your, your cost per mile, understanding the difference between your variable cost per mile, your fixed cost per mile. And then if you're smart, you can use those numbers to you know, help you figure out what loads to take. Am I better off sitting versus um, taking a, a load that may not pay quite as much? But that's a, a huge thing that that every owner operator really needs to understand. Yep, absolutely. Uh, that was another one that I remember uh, pretty well is you drilling into my head the difference between fixed and variable costs, and uh, and and knowing, as I recall, it's the reason you need to keep moving is because your fixed costs 
aren't going to change. They're, just, they don't change. Just because you're not moving doesn't yep. mean you don't have to pay your insurance or your uh, you know registration fees or whatever other fixed costs you have coming your way, yep. your truck payments. So, yep, a lot of the times you're, it's, you know, it's episode 36 that we talk about that and really go into it in big detail. But, you know, you have to be able to get a pretty big jump in in revenue to make up for that that day that you sit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Commandment number six. Let's go to number six then. So this is maintain your equipment. Um, it, it's super important. It, Ooh, is this where we get to talk about sharpening our axe, Chris? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Steve, <laughs> Stephen Covey, right? Yeah, that's that's right. the Stephen Covey principle, sharpen <laughs> your axe. You want your equipment to be well-maintained. Often when you defer maintenance, if, if you skip something or you know, you've know you got something that's causing some little problem, but it, it hasn't broken down yet and you decide to wait, a lot of the time that's just going to bite you in the butt because it's going to break down while you're on the road, away from home, and it's going to cost you twice as much. You may have to get towed. You may have to get a mobile mechanic. All of that increases. Suddenly, your you're, you're hiring the best hooker in Ogallala. You're hiring the be- very good. You're be- hiring the best hooker in Ogallala, Nebraska. That's yep, right. Absolutely. Gosh, this is a greatest hits yeah, this episode. Is a good My episode, word. Yeah. This is like a, the sitcom <laughs> that uh, that ran out of steam, and so they just have a clip show from all their previous episodes, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> number seven then, or do we have more that we no, want to talk let's about? Let's talk just a, a couple more things real okay. quick on maintenance. So uh, obviously as an owner operator, you want to do as many of the repairs as you can yourself. And you don't have to be super mechanically savvy. You'll want to learn those things, but YouTube's amazing. A lot of the simple stuff you can learn on YouTube. There's guys out there that have YouTube videos on how to do simple repairs you know, I, I've even watched YouTube videos on how to do the PM on a reefer unit. And uh, hmm. there's a, there's a lot of stuff like that out there so that you can, you can do those at, on your own. It's always best to do um, repairs at home. So you need to find a good mechanic in your local area that you trust that that's not super expensive and get as much of those repairs done on the road. If you, if you feel like your truck, you, you mean not on the road, they're not get on them the road done yet, at home. At home. You, a lot of times when you're driving your truck, you can sense something going out. You hear, hear a shimmy, you hear a vibration that hasn't been there before in the past, or you can feel your your air system's not holding air as, as well as it has been. Get that stuff taken care of at home with your home mechanic because it, it's just going to cost you a lot less money than trying to do it on the road. Very good. All right, now let's move on to number seven then. Number seven, and this is another one of those things that I think is a big difference between the guys who... Um, are super successful and those that aren't. Number seven is be a problem solver. You know, that's that's such an important skill as an owner operator because you're going to run into problems. You're going to have things that are that are an issue and you just got to think around, well, what can I do to fix this problem? Um, it, it's just such a, a, a common characteristic that I have found in, in successful business owners, whether it's inside the trucking industry or outside the trucking industry. So let me give you an example of how I recently had to do this. Um, Last, I think it was actually in June last month, um, I was hauling a load. This is the second load I've taken for my father-in-law. And so it's stainless steel restaurant equipment. Everything's kind of packed in funky inside the trailer. And we we're taking it to a job site. Well, the people that were supposed to unload everything are the guys that are going to install the equipment. They only had two guys there. They probably should have had four to, to help with the unload. Well, the last, very last two pieces of equipment were just too big and the guys couldn't handle it. And we were, Mike was driving. He needed to be headed out to his next load. We, we calculated, I think four hours to, to unload this load. And they were three hours into it by this point. And they couldn't, they, 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 couldn't unload it with just the two of them. And they were going to have to wait another hour and a half to bring two more guys from their company to unload it. So what we ended up doing is, is I got Mike to go find um, two construction workers on that job and just say, hey, I'll pay you 20 bucks. If you'll come help unload these two items, it'll take you two minutes to do. And so you know that's how we solve the problem. You just have to be a problem solver find ways around a situation. Take a little initiative. Don't don't just sit back and let life happen to you. Absolutely. Right? Control your circumstances. Okay, very good. Uh, Chris, let's go to number eight. Don't blow off the safety regulations. This is another one of those areas. Again, Motor Carrier HQ, um, one of my other businesses, we help a ton with this. We see guys all the time that have gotten themselves in trouble with the safety regulations. And 90% of the time, it's because they're just really... They're turning a blind eye to them, and 
and they're they're not doing that ounce of prevention's worth of pound of cure because most of these regulations aren't super complicated and you don't necessarily have to follow them 100 percent perfect but you want to be as close to perfect as you can do the best you can and um just just do them do do the maintenance like you said keep records of everything you know when you hire your driver go through the 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 hiring process that we talk about check all the boxes make sure you're doing everything your um you know your pre-employment screening you're going to their previous employers and getting the information that's required all that stuff if you do it you're gonna you're gonna be fine um you're gonna pass your your audits you're not gonna get pulled into the ports and get inspected all the time you know, make sure your equipment's really well maintained. Those are the guys that typically get pulled in for inspections when you see a, a truck driving down the road with a missing mud flap. And they're like, oh, well, I'll pull him in. Or, you, you know, driving a truck down the road that's dirty, that that's obviously not well kept. That's the one that's going to get pulled in for inspection. Okay. So, yeah, and, and it's uh, get ahead of it. And then you don't, uh, and then when you do get inspected, you won't uh, be stressed out about it or yep. whatever. Right? And then, and you know, so obviously that comes with, you need to understand the regulations and you can, I mean, it's kind of boring, but you can read them. There's stuff out there that right on the internet, on the FMCSA's website. Um, you, you can read everything there. Um, and, and the better, you know, it, the better, the better off you are. I mean, if you, you remember the episode where I got pulled over and got inspected, it was the one where I got caught speeding. Um, and, uh, I actually ended up teaching the inspector about the correct use of the adverse um, conditions exemption. Nice. And, you know, he w- wanted to write me up a ticket for it. And so I pulled out the reg, showed him what it said, and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, throwing down the law to the lawman. Yeah, to the lawman. All right. So number number nine, um, this is commandment number nine. We're coming up on the end here. And I'm I'm trying I'm looking for the pattern by the way. There we go. Okay, so be be stingy with your hours of service. Um, you you you've got 70 hours that that you can work in a in an eight day period, and those 70 hours can go by. And you you want to save your five minutes here, your 10 minutes there, you know, because over time that'll add up, and and it and it can save you. So I always recommend being stingy with your hours of service. And there's some tricks you can do to kind of um, you know limit it. One is um, don't get caught in traffic jams. You know, oftentimes if I'm driving down the road and I see a traffic jam up ahead, I'll take an exit and just stop and wait and let it go through, do my 30 minute reset or or maybe even stay stopped a little bit longer if I've got time just so that I'm not sitting in stop and go traffic because, you know, instead of taking, um, you know, two minutes to get or five minutes to get through a five mile stretch, you get stuck in a traffic jam that takes you 30 minutes to get through that that's 25 minutes off your clocks that you're not going to get back and and just it's not well spent okay yeah and it it just shoots your rate per mile i imagine uh, your time your time it does yeah you're you're you know kind of what you're yeah that's not not necessarily your rate per mile i should say your your, hourly rate as a driver kind of absolutely yeah uh okay so then then another couple things you can do is is don't start your clock unless you absolutely have to um, and for you take, for example, one of the things that I do is anytime that I fuel, you know, I, I, I'll do my fuel, I'm on duty, I'll pull forward on the fuel island to the, the line where you stop. Um, so the next guy can come up and fuel. And as soon as I do that, I put myself off duty, go in, you know, use the restroom, grab my free drink or whatever it is, but make sure you're off duty when you do those kind of things. Um, you, you, you're, you're out of the truck. You're not, you're not, uh, doing anything specific with the truck. So you can, you can be off duty and those kind of things. And, and you always want to do that. Okay. Then one last thing is drive at night as much as you can. You know, if, if you can get your body to switch a little bit, you know, driving at night, you, you you're run, into, run those into those traffic, traffic issues. Jams, yeah. you, you're not running into slow cars as much. And you, you really, that's where you get your most effective and efficient drive times. I like that one. Yeah. That's a really nice concrete tip. Okay. So finally, commandment number 10. Commandment number 10 is just to consistently work on getting better. You know, if you, if you aren't moving forward, you're really moving backwards. Your competition is going to keep, keep, keep up on you and, and, and pass you. So constantly work at getting better, whether it's you personally working on same things to improve yourself or working on things to improve the business, like constantly trying to get better rates, constantly trying to cut costs, constantly trying to improve the, the systems that you have. 
And, you know, there's a million things that you can do out there, but it, it's like an elephant. You've just got to focus on that one thing, you know, start with improving the, the thing that's going to have the, the quickest and most significant impact. Don't, don't try to get, don't let yourself get overwhelmed because there's so many things you can do. Just try to find the, the one that's going to have the biggest payoff and not going to be too hard to do. Do that one. Once you got it fixed, you know, worked on, go to the next and just, you know, kind of one right after the other. Okay. Very good. That's the 10 commandments. We've got a new 10 Chrome commandments, Chris. <laughs> 10 Chrome commandments. That's right. So, operators. all right. So I've been trying to figure out, and I didn't cheat, actually. I didn't look ahead. I've been trying to figure out what the pattern is here. Okay. okay. So best I can tell, these are the 10 commandments for owner operators. And some of the commandments are about being an operator and some are about thinking like an owner and you know being an owner how's that 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 that's actually pretty good that's not what i will that not well it's kind of this the last six kind of kind of go with that theme but my theme was actually um the first four commandments have to do with finances owner sure which which are owner things <laughs> saving money yeah. you know doing things like that and then the last six were um, really focusing on business principles. And, you know, this is, it's it's a business. So they're both kind of owner things. Dang it. So <laughs> so these are the 10 commandments for owner owners. For owner owners. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, we're, that's really what this podcast, this whole series is really focusing on, right? Is the owner side of things. Most of the, most guys that go into becoming an owner operator already have the operator piece of being an owner operator down. So even these 10 commandments really focuses on the owner part. Those last six are really, you know, good sound business principles. And, and this is a business, you know, this is a trucking company and you've got to treat it like one. The most successful companies are successful, not because they have some crazy competitive advantage. It's because they're run well. And that's so true in trucking because really, you know, Owner operators have some competitive advantages over the big guys because they've got less overhead. Well, the big guys have some advantages because they purchase more fuel, they can get better fuel pricing and probably some better maintenance pricing. But when you look at them, you know, the the ones that the owner operators have kind of cancel out the ones that the big guys have and and really to a great extent you're working on fairly even ground. Um and and the guys that are successful are successful not because of some major advantage. It's because they're just really well-run businesses. It'd be more diligent. They're more right. diligent. They they stick to those, you know, whether they're my 10 commandment principles or some other kind of principles, they stick to good business principles and good business practices. Well, it makes sense to me. Uh, well, hopefully people have gotten a little something out of this episode and uh, none of us have been hit by lightning yet not yet not yet i'm, I'm still gonna be watching out you know <laughs> you know if moses had held up chrome tablets there have been a, a lot more likelihood that he would have been struck by lightning <laughs> probably yeah they, they're pretty good conductors of electricity <laughs> all right so if here's the thing we've got 10 principles here in this episode and i'm going to throw it out to our listeners and say if there are any others that you can think of that you, you that you think we should add to the list or integrate into the ones we already have then let us know. I'd be really interested to hear what other people have to say as well. So like I said at the beginning, you can go to hollandassetsllc.com and uh, leave a comment in the show notes there, or you can go find Holland Assets on Facebook and get in touch with us there. And uh, you, so you can just say, you know, regarding your blasphemy, let's add to it. And I, I want to hear, I want to hear how you guys would add to this. So uh, Chris, any final thoughts on this episode? I don't think so. I, I appreciate everybody listening. I uh, love the comments that, that people leave us. And if you've got a second, give us a good review on iTunes or anywhere else you listen. That would be much appreciated. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next week. See you then. Bye.